Well, I just upgraded from the AC 180 that had 1,024 watt hours up to the AC 200L that has 2,048 watt hours. Matter of fact, I even added the B230 battery to this unit. They sync up and that literally doubles this amount from 2048 to 4,096. Now the AC 200L has a capacity in watt hours of 2048 the b230 battery doubles that amount to 4096 you know these usually run about 90 percent efficiency so that comes to 3687 let's just round that up to 3700 i'm going to explain this here in a little bit in fact i th thought we'd have a little fun here and see how much all these appliances and tools use on the ac200l if you haven't seen my videos before, check out my playlist area. I have our cargo trailer here that I converted into a camper. And last year I had the AC 180 hardwired into this and I sold that and I upgraded to this. It's a huge upgrade. But hey, let's have some fun, enough of the BS talk. Let's go through these appliances and tools and see how much wattage they use just to give you guys an idea. And then I'll go over the rest of this. But let's start out with the kettle here. This is an electric kettle. Got this off Amazon. Uh, I think this is roughly 30 bucks. Pretty inexpensive. Matter of fact, we're going to use this camping quite a bit for teas and soups. Um, well, let's start this and see how much wattage this uses. So it looks like uh, we're pushing about 1385. Let's just say 1400 total watts for this electric kettle. So let's shut this off. So let's write that down here, so 1400 watts. Let's try out the air fryer here next. So let's see here, let's try the steak setting at 400. I'm sure some of these have, you know, some preheat pre um, times to them, but at least this gives you an idea. So at least with this air fryer, and 1,157, um, let's just say 1,200. All right, so that was the air fryer. Let's check out this 32-inch LCD TV. So right now, with it completely turned on, we're pushing 35, 36 watts. Now, this is a very efficient TV. This is a 32-inch LCD TV. This isn't an old TV, it's very efficient. I got this for a reason for our camper, so it pulls very little wattage. We're only talking 35 watts, so 35 watts. Up next is this toaster oven. And let's start out with one side, just to get an idea at least what one side takes. And if we do the other side, most likely it's just gonna double that obviously. All right, next up is the circular saw. And I'm sure this is gonna have an initial peak here when I start this up. So let's see what happens here. So it looks like while it's running, it's about a thousand watts. But you'll notice when this first kick kicks in, look at the wattage. It peaks just over 2,000. So that split initial second there, it's double the amount of wattage that it requires to run all the time. And then while it's running, it's 1,000 watts. All right, next up is the coffee maker here. And it looks like that's pulling in about 1,548 watts, that's quite a bit. Now this is a really big coffee maker. Matter of fact, we have a smaller coffee maker in our um, camper that uses half of that amount. So it really depends on the size of the coffee maker, but at least for this one, we're looking at about 1,500 watts. But once again, we have a much smaller coffee maker for our camper that uses half of that amount. All right, up next is the toaster oven. Let's see what this uses. 
Right now I got this at full bore max at 450. Um, I just put it on pizza for at least right now. This is 1,245. Just curious what this does if I put this on broil. About 666, so must just use obviously the top element. Let me go back to like toast. Toast is 1,245. Let's try bake here. So it looks like this is maxing out 1,245 watts. Let's just say 1,300 watts. All right, next is the vacuum. Let's see what this takes. So at least while it's running, it's pushing about 1100 watts, but watch this as it spikes when I first start it up. So initial startup time is about 1800 watts and running is about 1100. So just to give you a quick load on this, electric kettles 1400, air fryers 1200, the 32 inch LCD TV is only 35 watts, which is very efficient. At least for the double toaster, it's roughly about 775 per side. If you're using both sides, it's pushing 1500 total watts. You notice at least some of these products and appliances, they have a startup initial wattage. You'll see that a lot too with like refrigerators that have like a compressor or an AC unit. When they first kick in, they suck up a lot of wattage, but while they're running, that wattage goes down considerably. But at least for this saw, you'll notice it starts up at 2,000 watts and while it's running is 1,000. The coffee maker, which this is a really big coffee maker, is 1,500 watts. But you can definitely get some coffee makers that are roughly about 600 to 700 watts. That toaster oven, depending on which setting you're using, is 1,300 watts. The vacuum starts up at initial for one or two seconds for 1,800, and while it's running, it's about 1,100. Um, so like I mentioned, at least with this setup, it's a considerable upgrade from the AC 180 that only had 1,024 watt hours. I'm literally doubling that capacity uh, for the watt hours. Now, you know, some people get this confused all the time. You know, you'll notice two numbers on the front here. This says 2,400 watts, but this says 2,048 watt hours. So what does that mean? The inverter can pump out 2,048 total watt hours. That's its maximum. It does have the capability to go over that with a surge, uh, but continuous running, this is what it's capable of. What this number stands for is the watt hours, 2048. As the AC200L has 2048 watt hours, the battery addition is 2048 watt hours. That's 4096. Usually it runs about 90% with efficiency. So that's roughly 37 total watt hours. You just take that 3700 and divide it by uh, the total watts that it requires. So if you have an appliance or tool that requires 1,850 watts, it can run it for two total hours. If you have an appliance that takes 370 watts, you just take 3,700 divided by 370 and it can run that tool or appliance for 10 hours. If you have an appliance or tool that takes 100 watts, you just take 3,700 and divide it by 100 and that's 37 total hours of use and that's just with my setup. Yours is obviously going to be completely different depending on the total watt hours that your battery bank um, can handle. There's a big difference between the watt hours and the power inverter. So, um, but What's special about this AC200L, you know, like I mentioned, it has 2400 total watts it's capable of pushing out with inverter and it does have a temporary uh, spike uplift of 3,600 total watts on the uplift. You can put this in a mode where it can supply power for such products, such as you know, something that has a heating element. You'd never want to use this with products that have like a circuit board. That's a rule of thumb. If it has a, a circuit board, you definitely don't want to use that uplift mode for that. It's just only products that have like a heating element. 
Um, and that's clearly defined in the manual. So check that out. Uh, the capacity of the two AC200L, like I explained earlier, is 2,048 watt hours. And this can charge from zero to 80% in 45 minutes if you're using the total capacity of 2,400 watts of input. And I'm about to go here over that in a little bit. Um, and you can also bring in 1,200 total uh, max solar input. Um, what I really like about this AC200 in comparison to the AC180 is it's very quiet. I noticed that right out of the gate and I've been using this for some time. And this also has a 20 millisecond UPS or uninterruptible power supply. And what that means is, for example, right now I have this plugged into the wall. So this is getting charged by the wall to the AC input. You see, like I turn on this kettle and it's requiring 1,389 watts of output. So you can notice this says output. Here's your input. So what's special about this, it has the ability to pass that power through. So it's bringing in the amount of power it needs to power this kettle and it's allowing that power to go back out. Now watch what happens when I unplug this. You'll notice obviously that input is going to disappear and it's still boiling this water. That input disappeared, but it has a 20 millisecond switch over. If it loses that power, it switches over to its own power. And this has the capability of pushing out 2,400 total watts, and this is only using 1,446 watts to power this electric kettle. So it's really just that simple. Now you can notice that this is not 100% anymore because now it's using its own power to power this electric kettle. But when I plug this back in, it'll start recharging it. So now it went down to 98%. And this will go up to 100 here really quick. And we're back to getting that power back into the input to charge not only the AC200L, but also the B230 battery bank as a backup. It's really cool. Now, one of the other upgrades I'm going to have to do the cargo trailer camper conversion is to upgrade the power strip. My old power strip was rated for the AC180 that could pump out 1,800 watts, not 2,400 watts. This is 20 amps. The AC200L on these AC outlets can pump out 20 total amps. Um, the AC180 could go up to 1800 watts, which was 15 amps. My old power strip that had a built-in circuit breaker uh, was rated for only 15 amps. So I had to upgrade this to a 20 amp and it has a very heavy gauge 10-3 wire on it. Matter of fact, you can notice on the end of this plug, it's not your average plug. You can notice it has one side of the fin here that goes at an angle. And that represents the fact that it is a 20 amp plug. And this is also not only uh, grounded and protected, but it has a built-in 20 amp breaker. Matter of fact, I'll put a link in the description box of this video for this particular um, grounded uh, power strip that has a built-in 20 amp breaker. Um, but you can see right now it is grounded. And the, re the only reason, reason why that's grounded is it's plugged into the AC wall. And it's passing that ground through. Matter of fact, if I unplug this, you'll notice that that ground goes away. Now, is that a safety hazard? No, it isn't because this is a closed circuit with these power banks. If they don't have a ground plugged into them or it's connected to the AC uh, wall outlet, it will not show it being grounded. But the second I plug that back in, you'll notice that that ground comes back on. And if you check out my videos in the playlist, at least when I have this hooked up to my outside generator while we're camping, that ground comes back on. So yeah, if you have something like this, the AC200L that has a capability of pushing out 2400 total watts, or 2400 divided by 120 volts, which is 20 total amps, I think it's important to have 
a breaker or some type of power switch here that has a built-in breaker that has a capability of 20 total amps. And you can notice, at least with these plugs, you'll notice one has one fin here that's angled to the left. But yeah, I think this is gonna be a tremendous upgrade to our cargo trailer camper conversion. I would like to get this into the trailer as soon as possible. Obviously, you can see it's still winter. So it might be a couple months before you guys see that hardwired into our cargo trailer camper conversion. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you got something out of it. And like I said, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. So when those future videos come out, when I get this hardwired into the cargo trailer camper conversion, that you guys don't miss those videos. See you guys in the future.